Hi, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and I'm here with Phil Augusta Jackson, creator of the upcoming NBC comedy series, Grand Crew. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Excited yeah. to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I watched it, and it's it's so funny. Thank you. Thank no, you I, so much. I appreciate it, and I appreciate that you have this, this ensemble cast of characters, and everybody's just interesting and unique in their own way. Um, I understand that this is somewhat loosely based on your own life. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, I am originally from Philadelphia and then went to school in Virginia. And then I spent uh, about eight years in New York mm -hmm. uh, working in advertising um, and then got hired to write on Key and Peele. That was my first writing job. And then once I once I moved to Los Angeles for my first writing job, the first place that I met the other writers on Key and Peele the day before our mm -hmm. first day writing for season four of Key and Peele, season four and five, uh, we met at this wine bar. Wine wasn't something that I was really into when I was in New York, but um, I, you know, I had a glass at this spot. The ambiance was really cool. They didn't really have a menu. You kind of just tell them what you like in wine, and then that ended up just becoming the go-to spot where I would catch up with my friends, and then you know, found my 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 kind of my tribe and my circle in LA as the years went on, and that remained the spot. And um, yeah, and that that inspired. Um, that's interesting. So, I mean, I, I'm curious, how do we, I have a wine question for you, but I'm, but now I'm curious about how Absolutely. we go from, from advertising uh, to writing on Key and Peel. Like how oh. did that, was that always the play to be in, in uh, a writer? Um, no, it absolutely oh. wasn't. I, writing always came naturally to me. And even in um, my advertising job, it was called brand, it's called brand strategy. So there was a lot of writing and analysis involved in it, but um, I didn't, I didn't have aspirations of, being a professional comedy writer when I was like a young star. I was always a fan of comedy. Mm -hmm. I like shows like In Living Color. I would check out SNL, different sketch shows and things of that nature. But um, it was a thing that, um, you know, just being open to to where life takes you and kind of always having an interest deep down, but not really knowing how it's possible or how to do it. And so while, while I was in advertising, to the short answer to your question is while I was in advertising, I started taking an acting class. And then mm. while I was taking that acting class, I started bringing in scenes because um, our teacher would let us um, stay after late if we wanted to and, and workshop stuff. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I wrote a one act play. I ended up producing that one act play off off Broadway for about a year or so. And then I started doing improv. And then once I started doing improv, I got an agent and um, wrote a pilot and then got represented for literary. And then about three months after that, um, got hired on 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 Key and Peel, so it kind of was a very organic, just in dabbling in things that I enjoy mm -hmm. creatively, and then the writing stuff kind of popped. But the whole time I was doing advertising full time, and I was a vice president of strategy. Oh, <laughs> at, well, at like a, very very corporate life. And Abs <laughs> absolutely, pitching new business and like clients like Hilton and you know Procter and Gamble and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I'd imagine that actually um, is to your benefit in the world that you live in now. For sure, I, yeah. I think I think that um, it it uh, it just makes you have to be a professional. You yeah, know? you've mm -hmm. got a you've got a job to do. Um, you've got a client that you you have to work with and collaborate with. So I think there were elements of of that that definitely were transferable when it came to being a showrunner on Grand Crew or even just you know climbing the ladder. Yeah, uh, in the writing landscape in Los Angeles as well mm -hmm. too. Understood. Yeah. So back back to wine. Um, yeah. <laughs> now you may not have originally been a wine person, but yeah. now what is your favorite flavor or type of wine? Are you sommelier levels? <laughs> so, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you'll notice in the show, it's like wine is the backdrop, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think the, the hope would be in a world in success with the show, like we would, I would like to track the characters knowing more and more mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. about wine. Um, and then later in the season, we actually kind of like, they go to a vineyard and like different stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But all that all that to say, I am by no means an expert. This is not a show that is going to teach people <laughs> <laughs> about the nuances of wine. I love it. I think, I, I think I'm think i I'm more knowledgeable about what I like than I was say yeah. eight years ago. But yeah. um, right now it's interesting. Um, there's, a, there's a wine that's featured in the show, mm -hmm. a black owned winery called Theopolis Vineyards. And um, our production designer, Bruton Jones, um, I guess was connected and was like, this would be a good, it, honestly, their, their label looks cool. So it's up in the bar on the mm -hmm. show. And I actually just tried their Petite Syrah for the first time at our um, premiere party a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. And it's fantastic. And I hadn't been really put onto Petite Syrahs before that, but they have a really, really good one. Um, and beyond that, um, 
there's like this Mexican natural wine called Beachy. Mm -hmm. They have they have a rosé and a chilled red that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, but when in doubt, it's like kind of Cabernet. <laughs> that's your guess. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Full body, not too sweet. You yeah. Know? I don't yeah. like too sweet. So my go to, like, yeah. if I'm going to get a wine and, 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 you know, whatever's available that I like, I would probably just go with Pinot Noir. Okay. That's great. Pinots are great. Yeah. Pinots are really, really, really solid. Yeah. And, and it, I tend to find, at least this is what, what I've been told. So maybe it's all in my head. Maybe it is true. But um, they say that Pinot Noir, it's, it's easier to sort of like you have your few glasses and you can get up the next day and not feel like, you know, like a crash and burn type of thing. I think that's real. And what's interesting, and I don't know, I, th I think this is true. If you, have you seen the movie Sideways? No. So it's with, um, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Um, the guy who uh, is in everything. Anyways, the movie Sideways. <laughs> I don't want to look it up either. What I'm going to crack up once because you said the the guy who's in everything. Once I see, I'm probably well, going to be like, he's, he's right. <laughs> he's in he's in lots and lots of anyway. In the movie <laughs> Sideways, he describes uh, Pinot no, grapes, the grapes that make Pinot Noir, and they're very very sensitive grapes and like and how they're like hard to grow. They don't grow under every, every condition mm. and stuff like that. So it's very interesting that a grape that is so delicate actually by the time you drink it it's actually very kind to you <laughs> i think that's very <laughs> yeah that's that's very interesting very nice yeah i think i think he was talking about pinot noir but yeah <laughs> well, well i will see after this um I, I think another thing that's really important um about the characters uh, as we were talking about like each person has their own personality but it's really um very interesting how even though there's comedy in the script you you add some humanity and balance to people i mean there's real emotion here and men are allowed to cry men are allowed to feel um, they're allowed to love. And what made you approach it that way? Because we don't always see it. Things just get real slapstick and hokey sometimes. Yeah, and we it's, just see that all the time. Absolutely. Well, it's interesting. I feel like it just from my personal sensibilities and from what I'm observed what I've observed in like the the landscape right now, it does feel like there's room for just like a really, really funny, funny mm -hmm. sitcom. And so that was the goal. Mm -hmm. You know inspired by my life let's let's make let's imbue this with with as much funny as possible but to your point um we still wanted to um give it heart so have have the relationships between our characters matter have them matter to each other um and we still wanted to touch on on some themes and so i think it was just a balance of okay we know we want to make a funny show we know we want these characters to care about each other and we want to we almost like and in the cold open it's basically all we're saying is we are more than our stereotypes. Yeah, <laughs> we have yeah. layers and multitudes. And so the goal of the show and over this first season is just to show those multitudes, show that we do have emotions, that we do have joy, that we do get sad, that we do get anxiety and, and things of that nature. And so um, it was kind of that trifecta of like managing the relationships between the characters, um, you know, uh, finding the funny and then also exploring different themes from episode to episode. But the, the goal was to do so without making it feel like we were on a soapbox preaching about th the different themes. So mm -hmm. the hope was for the comedy to lead. And then my, my hope would be that people watch it be like, wait, they were also kind of touching on some things that are that are pretty mm -hmm. interesting, you know? Yeah, because we are, I mean, at times we are we are laughing through some people crying, but then we're ultimately, we're getting the bigger picture of, of what, what you're delivering, you know, which is, you know, listen, this is a sensitive subject or something, you know? Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, cool. Also, I wanted to talk about the cast that you put together. Let's talk you about got some it. really cool people yeah. on this show. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's talk about, let's shout them out. Sure. I mean, <laughs> um, where to begin? So. And how did you get there? Like, you know, how did you so, know? <laughs> yeah. So um, the casting process was pretty, pretty amazing. And um, NBC, I, I give them a lot of credit because they they were very collaborative. And I think they really understood the tone that I was going for with this show. Um, and all that to say behind the camera and in front of the camera with the cast, a lot of these folks are my friends in real life. A lot oh, of them great. are the folks that are the actual folks that are my tribe that I get with mm -hmm. at the wine bar in real life. So folks like uh, Echo Kellum, like I've been friends with that guy for going on the better part of a decade. I met him when I first got out here. We both did uh, do improv uh, at UCB. Um, Carl Tart, same thing. Met him very early on in my time in LA. We became close friends. Like I vacationed with him and, and the crew. Like we are very, very close. Nicole Byer, um, I met, I Nicole might be one of my oldest friends in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, I met her over 10 years ago at UCB in New York, the Improv Theater, and she was working the front desk and I was just starting to take like 101 or 102, Improv 101 or Improv uh, 102. We ended up becoming close friends in New York. We performed together. 
um, when I first got to New York or to LA, she got to, she left for LA before, like a year or two before I did. And then once I got to LA, we wrote a, we wrote a different pilot together like mm-hmm. seven years ago. So we've, we've just been eager to collaborate and eager to work, work together. Um, and then um, when it, when it comes to Aaron Jennings, you know, I was a fan of, of his stint on Insecure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we brought him in and he auditioned for a few different characters. And then once he auditioned for Anthony, I was like, this is it. But it always mm-hmm. felt like he was, he belonged on the show and just his energy in the room and in talking to him, it really just felt like he was a natural fit and that ended up being absolutely true. Uh, and then Justin Cunningham who plays Wyatt, um, he's a Juilliard guy. Mm-hmm. And he he is just a student of 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 the, of the game and, and and his craft and uh, we never got to see him in person because by the time we were casting him I think the COVID stuff was looming do you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, but his tapes were just so strong and then talking to him in person it just really felt like a great fit and then the last piece of the puzzle was uh, Nikki's best friend and that is uh, uh, Gracie um, mm-hmm. Gracie Mercedes and she just had an awesome audition she had great chemistry with Nicole. And had that sensibility that really just rounded out the the um, the orchestra that is <laughs> this mm-hmm. ensemble. So I love them all. And they're so 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 great. No, that's great. And I love the way that you introduced uh, Nikki's best friend. That was I was like that was very cute and it was actually you. very very realistic. You know, it really yeah, is. Yeah, sometimes you just run into people, and mm-hmm. and you know, I feel like in the East Los Angeles, it's like there are black folks here, but mm-hmm. it's like it's not as many, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. so, so you can, you can, you can find yourself happy, ha- having these kind of serendipitous moments where you kind of run into folks. And then that, it, that oftentimes, you know, as an adult, it's hard to make friends, but sometimes you just, circumstances are right. And it just felt like, I'm such a fan of rom-coms that like, it felt like making it seem like it's a Noah story and about mm-hmm. him finding love, but then kind of redirecting that and then introducing Faye in a, in a friendship rom-com type of world. Mm-hmm. Felt like really just fun a fun introduction mm-hmm. for, for Faye the character. I, I love that. And I, I do want to talk about um, Black Los Angeles as well, because sure. a lot of times people just think that there are no Black people in Los Angeles. Yeah. But the thing that we always talk about is like, well, if you just sort of sequester yourself and only deal with a Hollywood scene, then that's that's your That's fault. what it'll be. <laughs> it's what that's it'll what be. it'll be. Yeah, yeah, it's what it'll be. But we're out here. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think I actually, you know, um, I worked on Insecure for two seasons, the last two seasons. And I mm-hmm. think Issa and Prentice and, and that whole show has done a great job saying yo look at this <laughs> we are mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. we're here we're beautiful and we we are living full rich lives that aren't what you expect and mm-hmm. how kind of relatable they are um and so you know just looking at that it's like okay east los angeles is just a different it's, it's yeah. just a whole is a whole different thing and i think there's a similar perception to what you're saying where it's like people don't think that black folks are out here, but like we are out here, mm-hmm. <laughs> we are out here. And there's a certain perception of Los Angeles to your point where I think it's like, um, it doesn't, it I doesn't. Think I'm- Unfortunately, yeah. it falls on the natives. Um, but the, the the negative perception that ever is, is that comes from it sometimes. I think it's more so on the transplants who just kind yeah. of yeah they just don't open themselves up to the environment. That's true, and 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 I think part of that is like it is. I think any major city is kind of hard to assimilate to. Yeah, get yeah, used to. But I think Los Angeles is particularly difficult. You have to drive everywhere. It's it is hard. It is kind of hard to make significant connections and kind of to hold on to those connections. So mm-hmm. in that way, I kind of understand it, but it, it is it is the type of thing where over time, if you're kind of open to it, it, it mm-hmm. I think the city will will kind of shape around your interests and, and desires, mm-hmm. you know? So, okay, so I'm just picking up from what you said earlier. I think that yeah. a lot of times like people will see someone's success and maybe just think that it kind of just so happened to to go that way. And maybe, maybe we can use the word serendipitous in a way, but sure. that's not necessarily what happened here because no. the things that you've said is, you know, you took acting classes, mm-hmm. um, even your corporate work prepared you for the writing in, in ways it did. And even for the interactions, I'm sure you were doing improv. You've been doing so many things to benefit yourself. I mean, what would you say to people that maybe want to look into what you do or just an understanding that like you don't just pop up on you know what or have a tv show tomorrow you know yeah Mm -hmm. um i would say that it takes time for sure Mm -hmm. and it takes um here's an interesting thing and i and it's a it's a lesson i had to learn like Mm -hmm. you know i i was doing i was taking acting classes I did that for several years. I did improv for several years, still do improv. I was making short films. I was writing plays. I was writing features. I was writing pilots. I was was writing short stories. Anything that felt like it was creative, Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm going to try that. And if you had asked me 10 years ago where 
I thought I would be in success of all the mm -hmm. things I was trying. I'd be like, oh, I, I'm an actor then in, in mm -hmm. LA and I'm probably on somebody else's show, not realizing that the, the real thing that was gonna take off for me was the writing side of things. So I would also say, just be open to opportunity as yeah. long as it interests you. Like writing has always interested me. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like I was making a sacrifice by not acting and going in more into the writing direction. It was a different interest that I didn't know had the potential for momentum like like it had. So I, uh, part of me would just say, just be open to creative mm -hmm. possibilities and to where, where the road might take you. Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess the other thing is, you know, that first job is really, really hard to get, but creating stuff on your own will keep yeah. your creative tool sharpened. Um, and then uh, the, the lesson that I, that I was gonna say I had to learn is like, when I when I got my first job on Key and Peele, mm -hmm. I told my team, I was like, hey, um, so I got my first job. It's on like <laughs> one of the greatest sketch shows ever. So I wanna sell a show now. I had a show, I think it was called like Pushing 30 about some young 20 somethings or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you might wanna like, you know, be a story editor and then executive story editor. You might want to like <laughs> climb the ladder first. Like I didn't know, I didn't know what I did. You I was, didn't like, realize it. It. I was yeah. like, let's just sell this show. And they're like, you slow down. But and I quickly realized how much I didn't know. And mm -hmm. so the other thing I would say is once you do have your foot in, just treat every single job as if it's the most important thing, because that is the most important thing, because that's the thing that's right in front of you. And mm. I think sometimes it gets, it's easy to just get caught up in the, ah, I want to be down here, but it's like, it literally got to build it brick by brick. So every job that I had from Key and Peele to Survivors of Morris, to my four years on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, to my two seasons on Insecure before, right before selling my show, mm -hmm. Insecure was, that was my priority. That yeah. was, I put my all into that job. Every single job you have, just treat it like, treat it like it's the most important thing because it is in that moment. And those people will see that work in those, and those are relationships that I, I feel like I'll have for a long time, just based off of how, how serious I took the jobs. So. Absolutely. Um, I think another great takeaway as well is that because of these, re this relationship building that you've done um, and it's very sincere, look at how you've pulled your friends into the show Be because mm -hmm. what, what you just said earlier is that, you know, you take every job seriously and you take every everything seriously. So now you've got friends you can call up like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Yeah. Would you be like, you know, just I'm just imagining, you know, being in a position where let's say I was an actress and then, you know, I get this friend Phil calls like, hey, you want to do a show? You know, like, yeah, I mean, that's how it happened in the work. Right. To Absolutely. You put in the work. And that's that's how it happened with Nicole. Oh, that know? was wonder. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. No, she's yes. so incredible. Mm -hmm. She's just a she's a she's an incredible talent, and she's a really incredible friend as well. Oh, I'm and happy to hear that. She's dope. Yeah, and and she was the first person I called when it came mm -hmm. to casting. I was taking a walk. I like taking walks around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I called her. I said, "Hey, I got this pilot. It's an ensemble. Um, one of the characters' names is Nikki, so you know what that means. Like, are you down?" And she was like, she basically said she was down to do it before even reading the script. Right. Did she didn't have to hear anything. <laughs> she didn't even have to hear Trust anything else. Mm -hmm. And then she read it, she's like, yeah, I'm definitely down. Um, and and yeah, so I, I think putting in the work uh, allowed, allowed the tr trust in me to mm -hmm. get those people. And also those people have been putting in the work for, Nicole's been putting in the work for years. Of Echo, course. Carl, Aaron, Gracie, Justin, everybody has really, really been hustling for years. So it's not, no favors were done. These are, mm -hmm. they're also the best people. Hard for earned, world. exactly. No, Hard that is earned. true. Yeah. And then could, also mm -hmm. behind the camera, I was, I was able to bring on my friends uh, too, because they also have been doing a lot of work and are, we're in a position where the best for uh, working on the show as well. So I feel really fortunate in that regard. That's amazing. See people relationship building and, and, and yeah. being someone that's sincere that it'll, it'll get you far. That's, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I love that. So what's, uh, what do you expect or what would you like people to take away um, from this show? Uh, well, first and foremost, I would like people to uh, find the funny in it. I hope people <laughs> laugh. They will. <laughs> um, I think that we're living in a, in an interesting time where like, I feel like it, It to me, the, in making this show, it's like, let's bring some joy to the screen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're like, we're in a pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic, we're, 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 we're marching for institutional reciprocity. There are so many mm -hmm. things that make it hard to be, exist as a black person that I yeah. hope people watch this show and say, despite the challenges that we face <laughs> in, in our existence in this country, we still, have dope relationships, we still have joy, we still have love. And also we are we are uniquely different and, and we are not a monolith. We we are different. And this show is just just my perspective. I'm not trying yeah. to speak for everybody. 
Um, so I hope people find it funny. I hope they find the love in the show and I hope that they, um, I just hope they laugh. <laughs> they will. I mean, I just love yeah. that the group just convenes, you know, and they all come together. They all find time for each other. So, of course, Thanks. some relationships may be sort of stronger than others because that's what friendship really is about. That's what it is. Some yeah. of us are a little closer than some of us, are, you know, kind of more peripheral in that sense. But we all make time and let's all get together and get to the Absolutely. wine bar. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, do, I do love that about the show. I, I thank you so much for your for time. Sure. I thank really you for so much for having me. I really, really appreciate no, it. No, thank you. And thank you for just such a thoughtful and meaningful conversation. Because a lot of times, you know, I talk to actors and I think people have a pretty specific way of how they see um, actors, you know, come to be and um, gain their successes. But I don't always get to talk to to creators, you know. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to speak to someone that can at least give someone some some hope or, or a pathway or or the fact that you come again, it's just, it's very fascinating to me that you come from corporate and the fact that you were a yeah. VP. <laughs> yeah, I, I worked in advertising until I was uh, basically 30. Mm -hmm. So this is my second career as a writer. So I think it, it's interesting. I feel I'm, I'm 37 now and I just now feel like I'm hitting my creative stride. And mm -hmm. I feel like there's an interesting thing in society where it's like, oh, if you make it entertainment, you gotta, you gotta be like 20, 21, 22. I was like, nope, I'm, I didn't get started until I was 30, really, really getting into mm -hmm. it. So I think the dream is possible. You just got to like put in the work and, and just trust that if you keep creating and keep building relationships, things, things will happen. Cause that's, that's, that's at least how it happened for me. So. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. That is awesome. Yeah, definitely. So Once much. again, my name is Coco with blackdome.com <laughs> and I'm here with Phil Augusta Jackson. He is bringing grand crew to the, to the screen NBC guys. It premieres January 4th and it's, it's really funny. And it's very thoughtful on um, the way that he created these characters and the lives that they lead. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Take right. care. Bye bye. Appreciate you. Bye bye. If you want to see more content like this on blackfilm.com, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell.